Uh, Senator Rand Paul and Dr. Anthony Fauci getting into it earlier this week over the origins of the coronavirus and controversial gain-of-function research. Ironically, this all playing out the same week that China rejected the World Health Organization's second investigation into the origins of the virus that just happened. Joining us this morning for more on all of this is White Coat Waste Project founder and President Anthony Bellotti. Anthony, good morning. Nice to have you on. Hey, good morning. Um, Good morning. The White Thank Coat, you for having us. Yeah, it's, it's our pleasure. The White Coat Project has made a name for itself over the last several years, exposing taxpayer-funded animal experiments. Uh, this gain-of-function research is something that people have heard a lot about but maybe don't know a lot about. Um, do you think that Dr. Fauci is believable in his claim that the NIH was not funding gain-of-function research, uh, the same research that may have given us COVID-19? Well, you said it. It's, it's gain-of-function is a type of animal experimentation. It's taxpayer funded. That is the essence of what the lab leak hypothesis is all about, that we were rounding up coronavirus infected bats in caves, in copper mines all across China on the taxpayer's dime, rounding them up, harvesting their viruses, their natural viruses, transporting them far distances all the way to the Wuhan lab, the Wuhan Institute of Virology taking those viruses, supercharging them, right? Manipulating them in humanized mice and other nasty, uh, cruel, and very, very dangerous animal experiments. Right. Taking uh, these viruses, putting them into humanized mice, making them airborne, making them more virulent and transmissible to people. That's the core of what we're talking about here. That's what Senator Paul was going after. I was looking into uh, the... Your, basically the, the White Coat Project um, over the last couple of days. And it, have you been to the Wuhan Institute of Virology? No, I've never even been to China. Okay, uh, all right. But because there, there, there is information on there that... the organization that it, who first exposed this grant right, back right. in April of 2020. So let me just... In my, January my question of 2020, is what, I, I, we quick, brought hold on, this quick to question, the attention Anthony. of the Trump White House. Quick, quick question. I just, and I just... we've been at this since day one. I've never, but never been to China myself. Okay, all right. So I'm, I'm wondering if the differences that have been exposed in the Wuhan Institute of Virology are really, uh, if they contrast uh, dramatically with institutes that do the same research uh, in Western countries like the U.S. Oh, but part of me, the uh, audio is, is, is a little bit uh, off. Would you mind repeating that? I apologize. Yeah, it's, I, I'm wondering if the, the conditions um, of the Wuhan Institute of Virology, from what we know, differ greatly from institutes that do the same type of research in Western democracies like the United States. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there, there are some similarities. You know, we are doing gain-of-function experiments here. We're doing them all around the world. In fact, we just put out an investigation showing $140 million of NIH, Fauci, NIH taxpayer money going all around the world for these kind of experiments. So there are some similarities and differences. But I think the most important difference here, in this case with the Wuhan Institute of Virology, is the fact that there's no transparency, there's no accountability, there's right. no oversight. It, it's a, it, it, the scale of this problem is difficult to fathom here. But that's the, that's, the, that's the most important difference. Dr. Fauci has said in the past more than once that the benefits of gain-of-function research, what you're talking about, basically mutating viruses to make them uh, more potent, far outweigh any risk. Take a listen to what he said back in 2012. The ultimate goal of the NIH in its embrace of this new policy is to ensure that the conduct and communication of research in this area remain transparent and open at the same time as the risk-benefit ratio of such research clearly tips towards benefiting society. Your thoughts? You think he would still agree with his statement from uh, almost a decade ago? <laughs> well, you ever see the, uh, the Al Gore documentary, An Inconvenient Truth? I have. 2005. Well, yeah, well, we kind of think that here at White Coat, we think that the Wuhan lab has become Fauci's inconvenient truth. Right. Uh, the fact that he's funding something that quite possibly, I mean, the more evidence we accumulate on this thing is as the core being responsible for a pandemic that's now killed four million people. 
please tell me how the benefits outweigh the risks on something like this. I, I've yet to hear a cogent explanation for this one. That makes perfect sense. Four million dead that we know about, at least 600,000 Americans, and that number it's, it's, goes up it, every day. It, it, and we yeah. may have paid, and we and we may have paid for this ourselves. It's it, a, it could be a self-inflicted wound. We, we may have funded the research that gave us COVID nineteen, and, and China will not allow a second investigation, so we might not ever get that answer. Uh, but based on the evidence right now, it certainly suggests that that might be the case. Uh, Anthony Bellotti, nice speaking with you this morning. We appreciate your time. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much. You too. Take care. All right, coming up on Wake.